No one likes flat tyres, least of all myself. And running a hardtail, it kind of comes with the territory a little bit more than you would expect. Now I could run tubeless, and I do run tubeless. So, I started looking into these uh, tyre inserts. A lot of them seem to be pretty, pretty pricey. They seem to offer lots of good protection. Lots of big pros are running them. But I couldn't really justify spending upwards of 120 pounds on two tyres. I mean, you've got things like Kush Core, Flat Side Defender, Schwalbe's uh, Pro Core system. And then I saw, um, I found Huck Norris's, and they're just single strip, Velcro's together inside the tyre. And I was looking at them, and it's just like, that's just closed cell foam. I know I can buy that by the roll. So, here we have five years of the stuff. So that's going to make quite a lot of tyres. So, is it going to be any good? Let's find out. Now the closed cell foam is essentially like the same type of material that yoga mats and old fashioned camp mats are made out. And it comes with different densities as well. So I find a slightly denser version of the foam. And for £20 on eBay, I've got 60 centimetres by 5 metres. So if we work this out, each insert is going to be roughly 50 millimetres by about, for 29er. By taking the circumference in the middle of the tyre, you're going to get roughly 20 to 22, I reckon, for a bit of salvage inserts out of this. So that provides some phenomenal value. And if it works, good times. I've got my scalpel, got my foam, time to get cutting. Two meters. You thought I was going to cut this by hand. Why would I cut all of this by hand when I can cut it using a laser cutter? All the advantages and accuracy for using a laser, plus the coolness of using a laser. Boom. Now laser cutters, like all similar processes, need a drawing to work from. And all design starts with drawing. You, you can make one thing once, but you draw it tons of times. Working over that design, working out a lot of the problems and things that need to suss out in the drawing design process before you go and make it. So I made mine an illustrator. Our laser cutter is working. You take an illustrator file, but a lot will take AutoCAD files. Once you export it, you take it to the laser cutter, which will basically follow the line of that drawing and using a laser cut through or engrave the surface of a large range of materials. So foam is no bother for that. Because of what a laser cutter, how it works, is great for small batch runs or test products or just making one-offs. Um, and with these, a little bit of hand finishing, getting everything ready, and then that's them ready to be installed. Installation's pretty straightforward. I made mine with cut marks and joint marks for 29, 650, and 26 inch wheels. So you cut it to the length you need and join it with the Velcro tabs. Some dumb set of Velcro on there. And then it's just a simple case of setting up your tyre and your wheel as if it's tubeless and before you put the sealant in, put the insert into the tyre. Now a little side benefit of this was the insert actually pushes the bead of the tyre against the bead of the rim, helping you seat that tubeless tyre a little bit more easily. Nice little side benefit there. Now it is made of closed cell foam. Now that isn't sponge so it won't soak up the sealant, but I would put a little bit more sealant in than you would normally use purely because the surface area has increased, so it's going to stick to the surface of the insert and you don't want all your sealant to disappear stuck to the surface of it. It's a little bit more than you normally have. And then again, it's just a simple case of seating the tyres if it's normal tubeless setup. So off to my favourite tubeless hack. Now remember, if you're using someone else's car, keep low so they don't see you. 
And if you're using your car, always remember to top the tyre up, otherwise the next time you go around the corner at 60 miles an hour it might give you a bit of a fright. So, let's take a look at the trail and see how to perform. So, the big question is, do they actually work, and is it worth the effort? Well, as I've got all of the facilities more or less to hand through my work, it's not a huge amount of effort. If you don't have a laser cutter in your back room, going about it this way, yeah, it's going to be a little bit labour intensive. But do they actually work? Well. I think myself and a few friends up with them and everybody seems to be digging them so far. A good number of us have been running lower uh, rear tyre pressures, for example, getting better grip out of semi select tyres and the roots and the rocks where they normally give up. A few of us um, have had some kind of close rimming ding calls and you kind of feel it impact, but the rim's fine. No slice in the tyre, no flat spots in the rim put one or two more PSI in it for next time and you're good for go again. Are they worth the 50, 60 pound price tag? That's a tough one. I don't know if for most riders it is. For a lot of, as of a lot of these things, if you're a regular racer, just that peace of mind might be worth that 50, 60 quid. To be honest, I haven't been putting them in my rear tyres. I've never had any issues that made me feel that I need that extra rim protection in my front tyre. But then again, I'm not a diehard downhiller. If I race downhill, if anything less than 200 millimetres of travel was not happening, then maybe I'd need one for front and back. But I've only been running them in the rear. For me, running hardtails and trail enduro bikes, putting the rear tyre, be able to put on that lighter tyre in the rear, having that little bit lower PSI. I know that when I do hit the rocks, roots and drops, I've got that little bit of extra. Let the taps off a little bit more. You just let it run that little bit harder into that corner, a little bit harder into that root section, without worrying that you're going to have an expensive repair bill at the end of your ride. So yeah, if that opinion changes dramatically in any way, or if they totally bin it or something bad goes wrong with them, I'm going to do a follow-up video. If they prove their worth time and time again, I'll do another one up just confirming things will go. I'll probably be giving a bunch of these um, on my Facebook page for likes and shares. So if you haven't already, follow the Facebook page down there and look out for the wee giveaway comp, which will probably be happening in the next few weeks and if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more always remember subscribe hit the little bell and give us a like still time for tea though